Ooh, first video of 2019. Happy New Year, everybody. We're gonna get started with Srebia. All right, so we're gonna set up for a four player game and we're gonna do the basic game first and add on the full rules after we get the basic rules down. So first you wanna take this blue base piece and put it under the main board. Now this is the origin board. Attach that to the main board with a random orientation. I thought this was actually a misprint at first, but you actually just have to pop off these little pieces here and then put seven of these purple willpower counters into each sphere. Now choose your spirit so you can be part of Team Gloom or Team Bliss. Then you take your corresponding spirit board and just make sure everyone uses the same side, either A or everyone uses side B. Now since we're doing a basic setup, take out the Reflection and Sensibility cards from the mini purple cards called the Common Aspiration deck, shuffle them and deal 7 cards face up. These are player order markers, go ahead and randomly decide who's going to go first. You just have to make sure that you alternate each team going, so if Bliss goes first, then make sure Gloom goes second, and then the other team member on Bliss goes third, and then we finish off with the other team member of Gloom going last. Now everyone gets four willpower and two essence, but if you're the first player, then you get two more willpower than everyone else, and you have to flip over your action tracker token. Now since we're learning how to play the first game, you can put your spirits, your team essence, the realm control markers, the frontier control markers, and cards in this setup shown here, so we can guarantee a fair start. Now let's talk about how teams work. If you're on Team Bliss, sit next to each other on the orange-pink side of the board. And if you're on Team Gloom, you'll be on the blue-black side of the board. You can share any information between your teammates, like showing your emotion cards, but you can't trade willpower or cards between each other. Now each team also takes three of these pieces called the Ambition Tokens and place their inactive side face up on the team board. Okay, so you know we have to match our player board for side A or side B. Your player board doesn't have to match your team board, so you can all play side A on the player boards and then side B on the team board. You can also take out the reflection and sensibility cards from the deck of hidden aspirations or your team specific aspirations, either blue to blue or orange to orange, and then shuffle them. Now remember how we laid out our common aspirations up top? Now take a look at your team's aspirations top card and make sure it doesn't match the current common aspirations. If it does, reshuffle and draw the top card again until they don't match. Now the reason we do this is because the aspiration cards are event cards that you're trying to complete and the team aspirations are secret events that only your team knows. Then take your respective team fragments, intensity tokens, vibe tokens, realm control markers, and action trackers. Vibe tokens will tell you which actions on your player board have been unlocked or upgraded. Now to start off, we're going to put a wild vibe token, which are the ones with these white circles, on the top four, which are move, invoke, quell, and fortify. Okay, now let's build emotion decks. On the back of these cards, you'll see a symbol or no symbol at all. Have one team member use the symbol cards and the other use no symbol cards because it'll make discarding and setup way easier later on. Now eventually you can build any deck you want, but for now, here's the starter deck for each team that you can start with. For the Bliss starter deck, you'll need these cards. And for the Gloom starter deck, go ahead and use this set of 16 cards. Shuffle them and place them on the main board, then draw two cards for your starting hand and turn the top card of the emotion deck face up and make sure the top card of the emotion decks are always face up. Then take the two brightness cards and put them on the main board in these slots here and then the bleakness in these slots over here. Bleakness and brightness cards are simple motions that are not put into any deck. And that is the setup. Now let's do a quick review before we move on. We have the main board with the base attached to the origin board and you can spin it to make it random as long as you make sure that the spheres line up with the fortresses which are these pentagons shown here. We also have 7 world power counters that are put into each sphere. We chose the spirit we want to play with and have their corresponding player boards on side A with 4 wild vibe tokens on the top 4 slots. We took out the reflection and sensibility cards from both the purple common aspiration cards and from the team specific aspirations, shuffled all 3 decks and put the common aspirations up top and the hidden aspirations on our team boards, secretly checking to make sure that our team aspirations don't match the current common aspiration. We also figured out alternating player order giving first player 6 full power and everyone else 4 and flipping over first player's action tracker token. Ambition tokens are placed face down on all the team boards and each team has their own fragments, their own intensity tokens, essence and vibe tokens. Lastly, we built our emotion starter decks and put the bleakness and brightest cards on the slots shown here. Okay, so how do we play Srebia? Now this game is a team-based area control game and the goal is to control the inside world called Srebia by having more points than the other team. 
Now before we talk about what you can do on your turn, let's go over how area control works since a lot of the terminology revolves around realm and frontier control. So frontier first. Now these triads influence the frontier. This part's super simple. If you have an emotion card on it, then you control this frontier and you put a frontier control marker on it. If your opponent has an emotion card on one of these triads, then they control it by putting on this marker. If you tie for control, the person with more intensity wins, but if both players' intensities are equal, then no one controls the frontier. Now the reason why you want to control a frontier in the first place is because it could be fulfilling a condition for an aspiration, which are these event cards. Or later on, we'll go over your absorbability, which lets you gain an extra willpower if your spirit is next to the frontier. Okay, so that's a frontier made up of a trio of cards. You gain control by having the most emotions on there and or intensities. And then you want to control Frontier to fulfill conditions for an Aspiration or for your Absorbability that we'll go over later. Now next is Realm Control. Realms are made up of four cards and have a name like the Valley of Motives. The difference is that emotions in Realms can be blocked. So if you have an emotion in the full Realm slot, it blocks the, any opposing emotion on the adjacent Frontier. But there are two exceptions to this. One, you don't block your own emotions. And two, even if your emotion is blocked, it still influences its Frontier and even the other adjacent Realm. Now with realms, it can also be influenced by a fortress, which give a plus one or plus two intensity. Again, if intensities add up to be equal, then just like frontiers, no one controls that realm. Now the reason why you want to control realm is that it could also be a condition for an aspiration just like frontiers, but also when you use a realm action that's associated with that particular realm, it will cost you one less willpower. Okay, so this triad is a frontier, and this area is a realm. Combining the number of motions and intensities tell you who has control of which frontier or which realm, except that realms also include fortresses, and all that calculation. Now realms are also different in that these full realm slots block influence of this particular realm from the adjacent emotion. And you want to control frontier and realm to meet conditions for an aspiration, but frontiers also help with absorb, and realms also help with reducing the cost of realm actions. That's how those two are different. Those are the two major area control rules, and on your turn you have three actions to take, and there are nine possible actions to choose from, at least from the basic game. Now let's break them down one by one. The first five are spirit actions on your player or spirit board. A vibe token on the left side of a row of spirit action means it's unlocked, but you can still use an action that doesn't have a vibe token on it by placing a vibe token as the first step of that action. So let's say I want to use the move action, but problem is there is no vibe token on it. Now to place a vibe token on move, I first have to discard an emotion from my hand and take a matching vibe token on the discard emotion. So since I discard a bitterness with a yellow symbol, I get a yellow vibe and place it in this leftmost slot here. If I want to upgrade move again, discard an emotion card like Jealousy and gain a corresponding vibe token. The restriction here is that you can't have two vibe tokens of the same color in the same spirit action row and you can't upgrade a spirit action that hasn't been unlocked yet. So upgrades are always optional, you don't have to upgrade in order, and you can only use each upgrade once. Now let's talk about each of these actions and their upgrades. First is move, which lets you move your spirit to an adjacent space by paying one willpower. You can share spaces with a teammate, but you can't end on the same space as your opponent. Haste, the first upgrade, means you have to pay an extra willpower, so two total, to let you move in one extra space, and you can pass through an opposing player. You just can't land on a space with an opposing player. Surmount at three willpower, however, does let you end your move on a space occupied by an opponent. So those three are all part of moving your spirit. Second action is invoking emotion. This is how you get more emotion cards onto the main board in the first place. So for invoke, you pay two willpower to play an emotion card from your hand onto an empty emotion slot next to your spirit. Then put essence from your spirit board onto the first essence space, which are these three circles on your emotion cards. The first one is shaded to remind you that you have to put essence here when you invoke it because sometimes emotions will have powers that trigger once they get invoked. You also want to recalculate control of realms and frontiers since you just changed it. I'll explain a little more on that later. The first upgrade is called bolster, which means you can spend one ambition by turning to the inactive slot in order to give one emotion one extra essence that comes straight from the supply. The second upgrade is Inner Force. So for two additional willpower, you can take the required essence from the supply instead of using your own. Now the third spirit action is Quell Emotion, where you remove one essence from an emotion adjacent to your spirit by spending two willpower, one ambition, and you also have to have the matching emotion card with the vibe color of the spirit that you're moving essence from. You just have to show the matching card, but you just don't discard it. Now if the emotion has no essence after you quelled it, then discard it from the board. The exceptions to this is that there are starting basic emotions, bleakness and brightness that you put on the board. You can quell them as long as you have any card in your hand since they don't have any vibe symbols to begin with, but you can still remove them from the board. Now upgrading quell lets you gain the ability called subdue, which is basically a double quell, meaning you pay 4 willpower to take away an additional essence. Now remember, you can only use the upgrades once, so you can't spend another 4 willpower to take away an additional 2, it only happens one time. 
The last upgrade is Extinguish, where you can spend a total of 5 willpower to not reveal an emotion, meaning you can have an empty hand and still call an emotion too. Number 4 is Fortify. So instead of claiming land, you can also strengthen the parts that you have already. You can only do this if you're in one of the spaces next to this pentagon-shaped fortress location. So since you're fortifying lands that you already control, obviously you can't take this action if your opponent controls the realm, but building a fortress on an empty location means your team gains control of them. For Fortify, you spend 3 willpower to place one of your unused minor fragments, which are these thinner pieces, on the fortress location. You also put a plus 1 intensity token on the space above it, meaning you now have a plus 1 intensity in that realm, but not on any frontier. So let's say you want to upgrade Fortify to Exalt. Now it costs 1 ambition on top of the 3 willpower paid for Fortify, but in exchange, you can replace your minor fragments with major fragments and flip the intensity of plus 1 to plus 2. The second upgrade is Raise, which you can only use if you're next to a fortress. For one additional willpower and a mission, meaning total you pay 7 willpower with 2 ambition, you can remove an opponent's minor fragment and their plus 1 intensity counter, or you can replace their major fragment with a minor one and downgrade plus 2 to plus 1 intensity. There's also a special case for Raise when you do this upgrade, you actually gain an additional action this turn. And the last action you can perform is Empower Emotion, but it isn't part of the basic game so we'll go over that after the basic game. Okay, so don't get discouraged by all the minor details, I know that was a lot of information, but just keep it simple. You have, in the case of the basic version of Cerebia, 4 spirit actions. 1. You can move. An upgrading move lets you move more or through other players. 2. You can invoke emotion, which is a way of getting more motion cards on the board, and upgrading that lets you give more essence to the card. So 2 essence basically means it has plus 2 intensity, which acts like 2 defense points. 3. You can call emotion, meaning you take essence away. And 4, you can fortify or strengthen and even claim new lands. Okay, move, bring emotion, take away emotion, and defend emotion are the 4 spirit actions for now at least. Let's go over the 5 realm actions now. If you control any of these realms, the realm action you take costs 1 less willpower. So let's say you control the valley motives. Normally you can pay 1 willpower, regardless of where you are on the board, to gain 4 willpower from the supply. Now if you control the valley motives, then you just get 4 willpower for free, with no cost. In the Cradle of Senses, you pay 1 willpower to draw the top card of your motion deck and turn the new top card face up. You can also draw that face up card if you pay 2 additional willpower and keep repeating this as much as you want. Now controlling this realm means the first card is free, but you still have to pay 2 willpower for the additional cards. In the Network of Thoughts, you pay 2 willpower to take one of your team's emotion cards from any slot on the main board and place it on an empty emotion slot next to your spirit, and then you recalculate realm and frontier control. In the Land of Desires, you pay 1 willpower to choose an emotion belonging to your team that's adjacent to your spirit, and add 1 essence. And you can also keep spending willpower to add that much additional essence from your spirit board to the same card. So I can pay 1 willpower and add 1 essence to Courage, and spend 1 more to add another essence to Courage. And in the last realm called the Willow of Values, you can pay 1 willpower to exchange any amount of willpower on your spirit board for the same amount of essence from the supply. Essence is not supposed to be limited, so if you ever run out, just use the token as a substitute. Okay, so those are the spirit actions and the realm actions. The differences between them are that A, spirit actions have to be unlocked, but realm actions are always available. B, you can always upgrade spirit actions, but not realm actions. C, controlling a realm gives you a discount of minus one willpower. And D, realm actions will always cost willpower, but some spirit actions could cost willpower and ambition. Okay, now speaking of ambition, before you perform or after you perform any action, you also have access to two different abilities. So by now you know that willpower is the main resource, and essence is the main resource for emotions, ambition is the third and final resource. So this is the inactive side of ambition, and the other side means you have an ambition available to use. These tokens are used for powerful spirit actions and upgrades like Quell if you remember, and of course for ambition abilities. You start the game with zero ambition, but the main way to gain ambition is at the end of your turn where you can flip over a face down ambition instead of drawing two motion cards. Now keep in mind that when using abilities, you can use as many as you want per turn, but you can only use each ability once. So if you look at your team board, you have three different ambition abilities. Now the first symbol means paying one ambition token lets you add a vibe token to unlock or upgrade your spirit action. The second one means you can spend an ambition to rotate the origin, which would give you access to different spheres. And then the third one means you can spend two ambitions to gain an additional action. So those are all part of the ambition abilities. The absorb ability is the other extra action. You can only use absorb once per turn before or after any action. Now to absorb, first flip over your action tracker token to the inactive side, which is just a reminder for everyone that you can't use absorb again this turn. Then you choose an adjacent origin sphere and take willpower from it. 
So normally you can absorb two willpower at a time. If your team controls an adjacent frontier, you can take one additional willpower for each one. If you can also absorb more willpower than what's actually on the sphere, you only take what's left. So you can't take one here and then one from the supply. You just have to take the one that's remaining. You can then receive the bonus that the sphere has. So there are five symbols here. Let's go over each one. Commitment means that you can pay one willpower and gain an ambition token. Humility lets you take one essence from the general supply. Diligence lets you take two willpower from the general supply, not the sphere. Knowledge lets you add any vibe token you want to any of your spirit actions, which is the exact same thing as the first ambition ability. And creativity simply lets you draw one emotion card. Now from there, if the sphere is empty, a revelation occurs. More on that in a bit. Okay, so absorbing means you flip over your action tracker to inactive. You choose an adjacent origin sphere, you take two base willpower, receive the optional bonus, and if it's empty, then a revelation occurs. And lastly, you rotate the origin clockwise one time. Okay, speaking of revelations, a revelation is pretty much a series of events that happen in a specific order, and these events are triggered after absorbing a sphere to the point where it's empty. Now first, each team reveals their hidden aspiration, which would be the topmost card of their hidden aspiration deck. Now secondly, both teams check their own hidden aspirations and their common aspirations to see if they accomplished either of them. Remember, you can only accomplish your own team's hidden aspirations or the common aspiration. So you reveal your hidden aspiration, you check hidden and common aspirations, and then step three is that any team that finished an aspiration can add a fragment to the center of the board. If you finished one, you can add a minor fragment. If your team finished a hidden and common, you can add a major fragment. And lastly, if you have no more fragments to add, your team triggers end game. Now step four is where you determine the new common aspiration. So fulfilling one means putting it face down. So the next leftmost aspiration is the current one. And if one team added a major fragment, then the other team has to pick one of the face up aspirations and return it back to the box, making the most left face up aspiration the common one. Now step five is where you choose new hidden aspirations by returning your current one back to the box. Doesn't matter if it was accomplished or not. And if your team didn't fill any aspirations, look at the top three, choose one of those, and then shuffle the rest. Just make sure that the one you chose doesn't match the current common aspiration. If your team did add a fragment though, just make sure your new top card doesn't match the current common aspiration. For step six, if you have an adjacent fortress location next to the sphere that's emptied, add that fragment to the center called the identity and take out the leftover intensity token. In step seven, replenish the emptied sphere with seven willpower. Okay, so revelations, let's keep it simple. What is it? It's when you're adding fragments to identity, which is the center base you had from the beginning. When does it occur? When you absorb a sphere until it's empty. And what do you do? You reveal your hidden aspirations, you check hidden and common, you add minor major fragments to the center, depending on how many aspirations you finished. And then since you just finished those aspirations, replenish them, unless you have no more, which will trigger the end game. After that, add fragments from adjacent fortresses and then replenish the seven willpower. Okay, so last part of the basic game, let's talk about what triggers end game and how to finally score. So Cerebri can end in one of two ways within the basic game. First is if the last common aspiration is scored and there are no more common aspirations, either because the final aspiration was scored or it was removed during the revelation. Now the second way we mentioned from adding the last fragment from either your adjacent fortress or from an aspiration. So scoring is super easy. You can use the Wheel of Intentions if you want to keep track, but basically you get points for each fragment. You get three for minor fragments, you get five points for major fragments, and you get four points for the capping fragment. If there is a tie, the team that wins is the one that's putting on the capping fragment. Okay, so let's recap how to play. You take three main actions on your turn. Technically, there are only two major actions to choose from. You can either perform one of the four spirit actions, which is moving, invoking or getting more emotions on the board, quelling or removing essence and emotions, Fortifying, which was adding intensity to a realm. Think of it as like defense and later becomes part of revelations. And those are your spirit actions. You can also perform realm actions, which you can do from any spot on the board. You can just remove the cost of the realm action if you're already in that particular realm. Okay, so you take three out of these nine possible actions and you can perform the same action more than once if you want to. So in addition to those, you also have the three ambition abilities that you can use before or after an action if you have ambition available to spend. These are the ones that let you add a vibe token so you can upgrade or unlock your spirit actions. You can rotate the origin so you can change access to spheres and the double action where you have four actions this turn instead of three. And the last thing you can do only once per turn is absorb where you flip the action tracker upside down just to show that you're using absorb and then choose an adjacent sphere and take willpower and the specific bonus. If it's empty, now revelations occur, which is when you're revealing, checking, and replenishing aspirations, along with adding fragments depending on how many aspirations that you finished, and depending on if there was an adjacent fortress. And then you rotate the origin clockwise one time after you absorb. 
And at the end of your turn, you're going to go ahead and refresh the action tracker token. And then you have a choice to either draw two cards or gain an ambition. We end the game from scoring the last common aspiration or when your team runs out of fragments to add, and then score points for each type of fragment and breaking ties if your team adds the capping fragment. Okay, so once you get the hang of the basic game, here's what you're adding to make Cerebria a full game. In the setup, you place each team's point counter to zero. This time, you're going to add all of the common aspiration cards, so you're putting back Reflection and Sensibility for common and hidden aspirations. You can also use Side B, which gives unique spirit actions. For the Vibe tokens, you can also choose any starting action to unlock, which now includes the action and power. Now for Emotion cards, you can set up the deck any way you like. There's no pre-built deck, you just have to use 16 mild emotion cards, and you can't have any more than two copies of each card. You can also place your spirit figures anywhere you want to start. And that's the setup for the full game. Team point counter at zero, add reflection sensibility back, use the other side of the playboard with unique spirit actions if you want to, place five tokens in any slot, make your own emotion deck, and then place your figures at any starting position. It's not too bad, right? Okay, so empower motion is the fifth slot on your spirit board. To use this final action, your spirit figure has to be adjacent to one of your team's emotions. The emotion also has to have the required or more than required amount of essence. So for affection, the threshold for empower is 2 essence. Now if it's at 2 or greater, then you can spend 3 willpower to replace this motion with its strong counterpart. And you'll find this on the right side of the card. In this case, affection is replaced with its evolution, so to speak, which is adoration. Now all of the old essence goes to the strong emotion, and the mild emotion is discarded. All the specific emotion powers are included in this little booklet if you have the origin box. But for the regular game, I'll go ahead and include a link in the PDF below. Thanks to Sibeveli, if I'm pronouncing it right, on BGG for uploading that PDF. Okay, so when you upgrade Empower Emotion, you get this channeled power where you can spend one emotion to add one essence to the mild emotion from the supply, and the second upgrade, which is Emotional Outburst, where you can spend an additional willpower to empower any emotion on the board. Doesn't matter where you are, and you don't have to be adjacent to it. Now, the full game also uses intentions, which are basically additional goals, just like aspirations, which are located at the bottom of your team board. You can get one point if you resolve one on your turn, and then two points if you accomplish more than one intention in the same turn. The last part of this full game is just this counter, which adds a third option to the end game. So normally you trigger end game by either having no fragments to add to the center or from scoring the last common aspiration. If your team gains 20 points or more during the full game, then this is the third possible condition to trigger the end game. So that is Cerebia. Definitely the most complex game I've covered so far, but it is super fun, very well made, and I know with all the rules, it seems super easy to get bogged down by them. Don't. But if you do break them down, you know, Cerebia has a lot of minor details, but overall, you just have to choose between your spirit actions and your realm actions, and then you get absorb and ambitions as extra actions. So try to keep it simple, have fun, and I'll see you more regularly now that the holidays are over.